Here, I'm giving you my heart. Take it. Hi guys, I'm presenting a Valentine carving, although of course you can carve it at any point during the year because I think it's so cute and so easy. I would be really glad to receive something like that, but you can carve it for yourself. After all, you are the most important person in your life. You can have it as a pendant or just a little decoration that you can put on a table. You can make it different sizes, you can make it huge if you want. Let's go. So let's start. I'm using basswood because it's nice and soft and quick to carve and because you can paint it some pretty colors. But you can use virtually any other wood. Like this one is cherry, for example, and it would look nice as a pendant of some sort. You will need just a small piece of wood with dimensions of one and a half by one and a half inch, which is approximately four centimeters in metrics. And the width is five eighths, or one and a half centimeters. For my carving tools, I'm using a flex cut detail knife and a small gouge. But if you don't have a gouge, you can do without it. Just use the knife and you will be absolutely fine. So the way I'm going to teach you, you will be able to adapt your carving to any size of the wood you have. I really believe in learning how to sketch and then utilizing this skill in wood carving. It's going to be really easy, so don't worry even if you have never sketched before. I will show it step by step. And as you see, I started by drawing a line in the middle for the symmetry. This is going to be our really valuable tool. Then draw this arch as if you are starting to draw a heart. This is going to be the top of our mittens. Leave some space on the sides for our thumbs. And actually, before I draw it, take a look at the hand. Look how far down the thumb is. Quite some distance from the top, so keep that in mind and reflect it in your drawing. It doesn't have to be crazily anatomically correct, so just leave some space on top. Continue drawing your thumb. You see how it connects the palm under a certain angle. It might be quite hard to try and mirror it exactly on the left, but this is what we are going to do. Constantly compare both sides. You can even draw a line to help you out and make the thumbs the same length. Then we are going to draw a line underneath, connecting our mittens and in the available space draw the thick part of the mitten, the one that goes on the wrist. Now let's finish drawing with the heart, the most important part actually. Here again we have our middle line to help us out. You can play with the size of the heart, maybe you can make the bottom tip more pointy, but I will stop there. Now let's carve. The first thing we need to do is to carve around the outline. If you have a band saw or a coping saw, you can use that, or simply do it by knife. It's a good exercise that helps you practice some cuts and learn to control your knife. And I find it really calming, it's like a meditation of some sort. So I dig right into it. Although I'm being careful because basswood can be quite soft and then you can easily cut off something important. Here I'm using a sweeping cut. You can see how my wrist is moving and curling. It allows you to do this curve on the wood. I will be using stop cuts a lot as well, just like here, the one I'm using to preserve the thumb. I do the stop cut and then carve up to it. And I do it all the way on the side as well.
I'm removing the corner. It might be a bit awkward going like that across the grain, so be patient, careful and choose what is more convenient for you. I do the same on the other side. First a stop cut and then rounding the corner. I frequently look at my carving and check the symmetry. Between the mittens, I'm using a V-cut and I also do it all the way on the side. Then I finish the other side. I do it gradually and carefully. Of course, if you make a mistake, it's not a problem. You can make your mittens slightly smaller or thinner, just adapt to what you have. I try to carve as close to the outline as possible. This way it will be easier to work with the shape and we'll have fewer things to do later. Use all the cuts I mentioned, the sweeping cut, V cut, stop cut, as well as push cut when you carve away from you and the pull cut when you carve towards. Be careful with carving towards, make sure your knife is sharp and you are wearing gloves or a thumb guard. Here we are, we have our basic shape. Now let's separate our thumb from the rest of the palm. I do it by using shallow V-cuts. Also, another thing to do at this point is rounding the whole thing, removing the sharp edges, softening them. We don't need corners as our mittens are nice and soft. Then I separate the second thumb by following it with a knife. That line on the bottom, we're going to undercut it and make a distinction between these parts.
I keep removing the edges. I check the symmetry, see if the thumbs are of the same length. You can separate thumbs a bit more by adding a bit more space between them and the palm. Also, don't leave them so flat, it doesn't look nice or natural. Make them rounded as much as possible. I remove the end grain on top as well. It might be a bit tough, so take it easy. Now it's time to carve our heart. Simply follow the outline with the tip of the knife with a slicing cut. And then we are going to carve up to it, creating some depth in the middle. Again, I'm only using a tip. You need to be careful here and not go too far. I carve around the heart and then remove the chips. So, all the way around. If you cup your hands, you will see that it's the deepest in the middle. However, this part is more prominent and it's on top, so try to preserve it on your carving. Don't go too deep there. Instead, just carve around the heart like we did before. I use the same method, just slightly undercutting wood and then removing it with the tip of the knife. If you don't have a small gouge, simply continue in this fashion. If you do, then you can do this a bit quicker. Carve with the gouge towards the heart. After that, I still use knife to remove all the chips and the fluff. You will need to do it a few times to get to the desired depth. This way we are giving our heart some definition, so it doesn't stay really thin like a piece of paper, but instead it's going to have some thickness. Here I'm rounding the thumb from both sides and overall we will make the change between deep and shallow parts more gradual.
Now I'm concentrating more on achieving the depth, so I will use my gouge again a couple of times. Alright, I think that's enough. Now I can just clean up the outline a bit, because there is still quite a lot of fluff there and little bits. Another important thing is removing the sharp edge of the heart. I turn my carving around, finding the best position. If I feel resistance or see that I'm carving against the grain, I turn it the other way. If you carve against the grain, you might accidentally carve off a big chunk of your wood. Here I soften the distinction between the deep and the shallow part. Another little cosmetic change I make thumbs a bit thinner. Now let's separate our mittens in the middle. With the tip of the knife I do some V-cuts. I'm going to soften the edges of the V-cuts too, so that our mitten stays nice and soft looking. We are going to carve the back as well, so that it doesn't look plain and boring there. We will continue our lines and make the thick part of the mitten all around it. And then it's the same drill of removing the sharp edges and overall rounding. This part on top will be curling inwards. You can always compare with your own cupped hands and see why. Working on the thumbs, separating them from the palm. If you look at the palm again, you will see that the thumb is under the palm. We are going to emulate it in our carving. Make the thumb thinner, so that it moves to the back.
I am removing the bandsaw marks and also making the mitten well rounded. Removing the sharp edges is probably the most important thing in carving this piece. We don't want it to be flat or looking like a rectangular block. Now take the pencil and draw the middle line. We will need to separate our mittens on the back and at the bottom as well. It will be hard to carve at the bottom because the grain ends there, so as usual be careful. If you want to get rid of some fluff and bits and you struggle doing it by knife, you can take a piece of sandpaper and sand the creases and around the heart. I will do the last rounding session at the bottom, then remove the end grain. And the last thing we're going to do is creating ridges on the mitten. If you have a V-tool you can use that or continue with a knife and do a few V-cuts along the mitten. Painting. Obviously you can use any colors you want 
My main colors will be green and red. And I will need two brushes, one bigger and one smaller. And at some point, if you want, take slightly darker green and add a shadow around the heart. I think it makes the overall look a bit more interesting. Paint from all sides, at the bottom as well, and then finish with red for the heart. And here it is, a little ornament that you can leave as a standalone decoration or you can turn it into a pendant or a keyring. Happy whittling!